So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography PX. In today's video, we revisit and review the Canon 5D Mark III. Initially released spring 2012, the 5D Mark III is the replacement to the wildly popular 5D Mark II, and like the Mark II, it's a high-end professional workhorse DSLR photography camera aimed to tackle the harshest shooting conditions. And while this camera sits directly below Canon's flagship 1DX lineup, it inherits several features that make it, in many respects, the more compelling option for a wider array of demographics. It has been quite some time since the release of this camera, and it begs the question, is this camera still relevant today? In the advent of touchscreen capabilities in 4K video, let's find out. So what are some of the goods, bads, and uglies of the Canon 5D Mark III? Let's start with image quality. Compared to the predecessor, the resolution has improved slightly, moving from 21.1 megapixels to 22.3 megapixels. While this is a small change, the 14-bit raw images its CMOS sensor delivers are sharp and rich with colors. And the dynamic range is surprisingly good considering its age. Combined with the in-camera HDR effect and you can create HDR images with little noise and artifacts when recovering shadows. It also includes a new ICLF metering system from the 7D for better metering. For continuous shooting, it delivers a burst rate of 6 frames per second, though the performance here does vary based on the cards used. If used with the UDMA 7CF cards, it offers a 33 RAW or 60 plus shot JPEG buffer. While not the fastest, the camera is definitely capable for moderate sports and wildlife. How about video quality? From a video standpoint, the camera shows its age, but it remains excellent nonetheless. It only shoots 1080p full HD video up to 30 frames per second, no 4K video here, however it uses the all-eye compression method with an impressive 91 Mbps data rate. While it doesn't offer any variable frame rates like 60 or 120 frames per second, the 1080 footage it delivers remains sharp, vibrant, and delivers exceptional dynamic range. With version 1.2.1, the camera now outputs a clean, uncompressed 8-bit 422 signal to an external monitor or recorder, a perfect option for budding filmmakers. Like many cameras, it features the industry standard 29 minutes and 59 second recording limit, and it segments video recordings into 4 gigabyte chunks. How about low light performance? Its low light performance represents a significant leap in capabilities over the predecessor. The result of the new Digic 5 Plus processor, it now features a native ISO range from ISO 100 to 25,600, further expandable to 102,400 instead of just 6,400. In performance, the camera delivers a one-stop improvement over the predecessor, and it can easily provide usable images up to ISO 6400 and videos up to ISO 3200 without any real need for post-production. How about its focusing performance? The autofocusing system on this camera has greatly improved over the predecessor. Unlike the predecessor's 9-point AF system, Canon overhauled the system with a very sophisticated and advanced 61-point system closely mirroring their flagship 1DX. This is a 128% improvement. With this system, 41 of its points are cross-type compatible. Focusing performance is both fast and accurate, even in low light, and even the outer edges track subjects with a remarkably high hit rate. The camera also provides an enormous amount of customization over the autofocusing performance through the menus, allowing users to customize its performance to best suit their shooting needs. Outside of the 1DX flagship, this is among the best performing autofocusing systems for shooting stills. However, video is quite a different story. The camera lacks continuous autofocus during video recording, and the available autofocus is quite slow and only works by half depressing the shutter or using the AF on button. So while this is capable as a video camera, it's not the ideal video tool for those who rely on autofocus during video recording. How about battery performance? Battery life is excellent for this class of camera. It uses the standard LPE6 battery, which can erase for 950 shots per charge. Let's talk about its display and viewfinder. It features a top deck LCD, which displays critical shooting parameters when shooting at waist level to save time looking at the rear screen. 
It also features a 3.2 inch rear TFT LCD with a resolution of 1.04 million dots and overall it provides excellent color reproduction and ample contrast for image preview. It also features an optical viewfinder with 100% coverage of the image area and a large 0.71x magnification. However, it isn't the standard implementation typically seen on DSLRs. With this release, Canon has installed an intelligent display, which superimposes an overlay to display autofocusing points, exposure information, and grid lines, which is quite helpful. For menus, it features the traditionally designed and structured Canon menus. Both newcomers to Canon and existing users will find the navigating experience on this camera very intuitive, and it's easily mastered. It features the customizable My Menu, which allows users to make a custom list of their favorite menu settings. And like many other Canon cameras, it too features the Quick Menu for more immediate access to critical shooting parameters. However, unlike other cameras, it has a built-in RAW processing engine. Using this feature allows users to convert RAW images to black and white, adjust white balance, brightness, and other settings. The camera now also features a side-by-side -side comparative image review mode for more straightforward image comparisons in the playback mode. It features three custom shooting preset modes, C1 through C3, for quick access to programmable configurations. And lastly, the depth of field preview button is now programmable and conveniently located by the grip for easy operation with the right ring finger. Outside of these customizations, the body is largely unchanged from the predecessor, though a few key improvements do exist. Firstly, it now features a dedicated live view switch for more convenient access to this functionality. Secondly, there's now a dedicated button to view creative options such as HDR, multiple exposure, and filters. Thirdly, it now features a lock on the mode dial to prevent accidental changes during transportation. And unlike the predecessor, it now features a dedicated rate button, which allows users to rate images in camera, making the process of sorting through images faster. These ratings also translate to post-production software, saving quite a bit of time in the process. And lastly, it features a customizable multi-function button, which users can map to any number of different functions. In size, it remains among the largest Canon SLRs to date. In this case, it weighs 860 grams body only. However, like most professional grade digital SLRs, this added bulk goes in its favor to provide more physical controls for the professional demographic it aims. Almost all critical shooting parameters and settings are easily accessible by dedicated buttons and most of which are on the right side of the camera surrounding the grip. In build, it features a robust magnesium alloy construction, which gives the camera full weather sealing and maximum durability. And like other cameras in this class, it provides an AF joystick for autofocus point selection or menu navigation. What kind of other niche features does it provide? Well, it houses dual card slots, one of which is compact flash and the other an SD. This setup is perfect for professionals who need redundant recording. The SD slot also works with iFi wireless SD cards for wireless tethering and image transfer. It has a microphone input, and you can also change the microphone sensitivity or display levels while recording. Unlike the predecessor, it now has a headphone input to monitor captured audio. It features a built-in electronic level. It features autofocus micro adjustment, which fine tunes the and adjusts the attached lens for precise focus and it has a sync port which supports time code for multiple camera setups or to trigger compatible flash units. But what doesn't it have? Well, due to age, as mentioned previously, it doesn't feature 4K, nor does it feature 1080p in any high frame rates, be it 60 or 120p. Like many other cameras, it also partitions files into four gigabyte segments, which requires post-production merging. The camera also lacks continuous autofocus during video recording, and the available autofocus is quite slow and only works by half to pressing the shutter or using the AF on button. So while this camera is capable as a video camera, it's not the greatest option for those who rely on autofocus during video recording. Consider Canon's 5D Mark IV or the 7D Mark II cameras instead. Its rear screen is also both fixed and doesn't supply any level of touch capabilities. It also lacks a built-in pop of flash, understandable for its class. It does not have built-in Wi-Fi, however, so if you desire wireless connectivity, you will have to purchase an iFi capable SD card. Thankfully, they're cheap. And it lacks a built-in intervalometer for time-lapse recording. You will have to use an external intervalometer instead. So in the end, is the 5D Mark III a good camera for you? 
It's an excellent choice for professionals who shoot demanding mediums such as weddings, sports, journalism that need a rugged camera with an autofocusing system that guarantees accuracy. It's also a compelling choice for someone looking for a robust photography-centric tool who doesn't necessarily need the fastest shooting speeds, nor do they need video. For videographers, while this camera is capable, it's quite limited for the aspiring professionals. It doesn't feature advanced video-centric features such as 4K capabilities, touch focus, waveforms, histograms, etc. And when compared to today's 4K capable cameras, it's best to look elsewhere if video is essential to your workflow. However, if you're content with shooting strictly in 1080p at 30 frames per second with single shot autofocus or manually focusing, this is otherwise an excellent video camera. If you currently own the 5D Mark II, consider upgrading. The faster autofocusing, better video quality, updated controls, and a more configurable feature set make it a worthy upgrade. In the end, the 5D Mark III is a high-end enthusiast and professional camera aimed at photographers looking for a competitive, all-rounded still shooter. And even after so much time has passed, it has aged quite gracefully and remains a powerful tool in one's arsenal. Although it seems to build on everything that made the Mark II so famous, the Mark III is a new camera from the ground up. While it's not a complete overhaul or dramatic leap in technology, it does fix all of the gaps in the predecessor's performance, and it still manages to deliver to any daring professional even considering its age. So there you have it my friends. That is our review of the Canon 5D Mark III. For more information and for a more detailed review, visit our website, photographypx.com. Go over to our camera reviews page, go into the Canon section, and there you'll find the full hands-on written review of the Canon 5D Mark III, some more detailed information, as well as other examples from other Canon cameras that may be of interest to you. I've been your host here, Devon Lennox, photographypx.com. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the contents of today's video insightful and added value to you. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, leave us a like and a comment in the description down below. Let us know if I overlooked something or I missed something covered in today's video. This is Devon Lennox. You know where to find us. Photography. <laughs>